Take a 350 Chevrolet block. Drop in a crankshaft from a 400. Do the math. 4.00 inch bore times 3.75 inch stroke times pi divided by 4 times 8 cylinders. The answer is 383 cubic inches, a number that would haunt NASCAR officials and launch 40 years of stroker engine culture. This wasn't exotic metallurgy or secret racing technology. This was two production Chevrolet parts that happened to create magic when combined. Smokey Eunuch was one of the first to recognize what that combination meant. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, NASCAR was trying to control costs through displacement limits, pushing manufacturers towards small block engines that were lighter and cheaper than the big block monsters dominating racing. The 383 Stroker technically qualified as a small block by displacement but it performed like the big blocks officials were trying to eliminate massive torque from that long stroke. Power curves that stayed flat from 4,500 to 7,000 RPM and lap times that matched 427 seconds while weighing 100 pounds less. How did Smokey turn a mathematical accident into a racing weapon that NASCAR couldn't legally stop? The answer reveals his genius wasn't always about bending rules. Sometimes it was about understanding them better than the people who wrote them. The 383 was completely legal. NASCAR desperately wanted to ban it anyway. And when they couldn't, they learned a lesson about writing rule books that Smokey taught them the hard way. Historical context and development. Late 1960s NASCAR was dominated by big block displacement wars. Chevrolet 427s, Ford 427 SOHCs, and Chrysler 426 Hemis were pushing costs into the stratosphere as teams chased cubic inches and manufacturers dumped money into racing programs. NASCAR officials recognized the cost spiral was unsustainable, discussing displacement restrictions and even separate small block racing classes. Small blocks offered advantages beyond cost. Lighter weight, better handling, improved fuel economy, but they couldn't match big block power. The search was on for competitive small block formulas that could level the playing field without requiring exotic engineering. The discovery came from simple production reality. Chevrolet introduced the 400 small block in 1970, designed for trucks and large cars needing torque without big block weight. To achieve 400 cubic inches from a small block architecture, Chevrolet engineers used a uniquely long 3.75 inch stroke the longest stroke ever fitted to a Chevy small block. Someone in the performance community, likely Smokey or his network of engine builders, did straightforward mathematics. The 350 block used a 4.00 inch bore. The 400 crankshaft provided 3.75 inch stroke. Multiply bore times stroke times pi, divide by four, multiply by eight cylinders, and you get 377 cubic inches with standard bore sizes, overbore slightly to 4.030 inches, and you're at 383 cubic inches. This mattered because 383 fell within small block displacement limits NASCAR was considering, but that long stroke created torque characteristics like big blocks that officials were trying to eliminate. The rod ratio was excellent for power production, the displacement advantage over conventional 350S was substantial. Weight remained small block light. Cost was dramatically cheaper than building big blocks. And critically, every component was available from Chevrolet parts counters. This wasn't exotic racing hardware. It was production parts cleverly combined. Smokey Eunuch understood immediately what the combination meant a loophole in displacement-based regulations that nobody had anticipated. He built development engines, tested them at tracks where small block rules existed, and proved the 383 could compete directly with big blocks while technically remaining legal. The Golden Age. Smokey's 383 engines began appearing at various tracks in the early 1970s, posting performance that made officials do double takes at displacement declarations. These small blocks were running lap times that matched 427 big blocks. Fuel economy exceeded big block consumption by 15 to 20 percent. 
Weight distribution improved handling compared to nose-heavy big-block cars. Officials noticed the performance, but initially didn't understand how a sub-400 cubic inch engine was achieving it. The numbers told the whole story that NASCAR didn't want to hear. Performance specifications were devastating to the competition. Smokey's 383s produced an estimated 475 to 500 horsepower, matching contemporary big block output, despite giving away 40 plus cubic inches. Torque exceeded 480 pound feet, massive for anything claiming small block status. The engines revved cleanly to 7,000 plus RPM, combining big block torque with small block rev capability that shouldn't have existed in the same package. Power to weight ratios exceeded big blocks because the engine weighed 100 plus pounds less than a 427. Improving acceleration and handling simultaneously, reliability was excellent. Thanks to the strong 350 block foundation, and proven 400 crankshaft components that had already logged millions of miles in truck service, the 383 dominated wherever small block rules existed. Short track racing saw Smokey's combination rewriting record books that had stood for years. Road courses particularly favored the 383's balance of power and handling. The weight savings made cornering speeds higher, while the torque launched cars out of turns like big blocks, modified racing classes, experienced complete upheaval as 383s made previous combinations obsolete overnight. Drag racing discovered the potential, with bracket racers finding the torque curve perfect for consistent elapsed times, without the maintenance headaches of highly strung big blocks. Everywhere it appeared, the 383 dominated, and competitors couldn't understand how. Technical brilliance. The foundation was beautifully simple, which was part of the genius. The 350 block provided a four inch bore, the perfect starting point for displacement calculations and large enough to support valves that could flow serious air. Strong Siamese cylinder walls handled increased pressures from higher compression and boost if anyone got creative. Four bolt main caps and performance versions anchored the bottom end against the massive torque. The long stroke would generate production blocks were readily available everywhere, with cheap cores flooding junkyards from wrecked trucks and worn out passenger cars. Proven reliability came from millions produced across countless applications. Chevrolet had engineered the 350 to be bulletproof for truck duty, and the 383 simply exploited that foundation. The 400 crankshaft was the critical component that made everything work. Its 3.75-inch stroke was the longest ever fitted to a Chevy small block. Originally designed to achieve 400 cubic inches from the slightly larger 4.125-inch bore of the 400 block forged steel construction in early versions, provided strength for racing abuse that cast cranks couldn't survive. External balance required special flex plates and harmonic balancers, adding complexity and cost, but the stroke length was the dimension that mattered. Those counterweights positioned specifically for the 400's balance requirements could be adapted to work in the 350 block with proper balancing work. That extra stroke length, 0.75 inches longer than the 350's 3.00 inch stroke, created the displacement and torque that transformed the combination from interesting to dominant, the mathematics were accessible to anyone with basic geometry knowledge. Bore of 4.00 inches, or 4.030 inches, with a standard 0.030 inch overbore that most machine shops performed routinely, multiplied by stroke of 3.75 inches, multiplied by 0.7854, pi divided by 4 for circular area, multiplied by 8 cylinders, yielded 383 cubic inches. The calculation was simple enough for shade tree mechanics to understand, yet the implications were profound. The displacement fell just under typical small block limits of 400 cubic inches, while delivering torque characteristics that matched engines 50 cubic inches larger. NASCAR's rulebook writers had never considered that bore, and stroke combinations could create such dramatically different performance at similar displacements. Challenges rise. 
Political pressure on NASCAR escalated between 1972 and 1974 as the 383's dominance became undeniable and competitors exhausted patience with losing to what they considered a loophole exploit. Competitors protested to officials that strokers violated the spirit of small block rules, even if they met the letter of displacement regulations. Ford teams demanded equivalency adjustments, arguing their small block architectures couldn't replicate the combination as easily. Mopar teams claimed unfair advantage from Chevrolet's production parts compatibility. The fact that you could build a competitive 383 from a Chevy dealer parts counter, while Ford and Chrysler required expensive custom components. Sponsors threatened to reduce support over competitive imbalance, concerned that one manufacturer dominating would hurt television ratings and fan interest. NASCAR officials faced a difficult decision that had no good solutions. How to address a combination that was completely legal by their rule book, but completely contrary to their cost control and competitive balance intentions, the technical debate revealed fundamental rule book inadequacy that embarrassed officials who'd thought displacement limits would solve their problems. Displacement was clearly legal by measurement. 383 cubic inches fell comfortably under small block limits that typically ranged from 360 to 400 cubic inches, depending on the specific class. But the intent of small block rules was reducing power output and cost compared to big block racing. The 383 stroker delivered big block performance from small block displacement exploiting a loophole that rules written for displacement alone couldn't address. NASCAR's regulations hadn't accounted for stroke versus bore variations, creating vastly different engine characteristics at identical displacement numbers. A383 built with a long stroke behaved nothing like a hypothetical 383 built with a large bore and short stroke. But NASCAR's rules treated them identically, NASCAR proposed stroke length limits as the nuclear option. Maximum 3.48 inch stroke for small blocks would kill the 383 combination completely, making it impossible to achieve that displacement without boring blocks beyond safe limits. The proposal would also eliminate Chevrolet's production 400 small block entirely, creating political problems with General Motors who could argue, correctly, that NASCAR was banning production engines to solve a racing problem Chevrolet lobbied aggressively against the rule change through back channels, arguing that punishing production-based combinations contradicted NASCAR's frequently stated goal of keeping racing relevant to streetcars that fans could buy. The political battle played out behind closed doors, while Smokey kept winning races. Legacy and Modern Reality The 383's NASCAR career was brief, but its impact on performance culture became permanent and far-reaching. The combination migrated from professional racing to street performance, where cost advantages mattered more and rules didn't exist, to stop innovation. Hot Rod magazine featured detailed builds that enthusiasts could replicate in home garages with basic tools. The combination became the default recommendation for anyone building a serious, small-block Chevy, whispered at cruise nights and proven on drag strips. Drag racing discovered the potential quickly, with bracket racers loving the consistent torque curve that made hitting target elapsed times easy. Circle track racing at local and regional levels saw 383S dominating for decades, long after NASCAR had regulated them into irrelevance at the national level, the formula became foundational knowledge that every Chevy enthusiast possessed, passed down through generations. The aftermarket exploded with 383 specific components as demand, proved the combination's popularity, Companies offered complete stroker kits with all necessary parts, matched and ready to assemble. Balanced rotating assemblies eliminated the most complicated aspect of the build, external balancing that required specialized equipment and expertise. Custom pistons became available for any compression ratio and deck height combination imaginable, from mild street engines to full race monsters. 
Prices dropped as production volume increased, making 383 builds accessible to working-class enthusiasts who couldn't afford big-block exotics. What started as insider knowledge among professional builders became so mainstream, you could order everything from a Summit Racing catalog and bolt it together in a weekend. The 383 was just the beginning of stroker culture that continues today. Builders applied Smokey's formula to every combination possible. 396 strokers using 3.875 inch stroke cranks, 406 strokers combining maximum bore with even longer stroke, 434 strokers based on 400 blocks bored and stroked to the absolute limit of block integrity. Smokey took two production Chevy parts, did the math, and created the most copied engine combination in history. NASCAR tried to stop him but couldn't ban what was technically legal. Forty years later, every stroker motor owes Smokey a debt. Subscribe for more formulas that changed everything.